If you're wondering how rosemary oil can help you regrow healthy hair, this is the video for you. We're gonna go in depth on rosemary oil right now, so make sure to stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here, and welcome to the Hair God YouTube channel. On this channel, we create science-backed videos, just like this one, all about how you can combat hair loss and regrow hair. If you're new here, consider subscribing. The question of the day today is, have you ever used rosemary oil and what were your results of using it? So let's get into the video. What you're going to learn today in this video is, well, the aim of the video is to present a concise review of the information that is available to answer the following questions. What is rosemary oil? What are its claimed benefits? What type of hair loss is it supposed to be able to treat? Is there evidence to support these claims? What are the side effects and how should it be used? So first things first guys, what is rosemary oil? Rosemary oil is an essential oil that has been extracted from the pine-like leaves of the rosemary plant through a process of steam distillation. It has been widely used for centuries as a folk remedy for numerous health conditions. In modern times, it has come into widespread use in food, cosmetics and pharmaceuticals. Rosemary, like most medicinal plants, has an interesting history. The ancient Greeks and Romans referred to it as the herb of remembrance and fidelity, most likely based on their belief that it strengthened the memory. The Romans used it to decorate statues of their household gods and as a sacred incense in religious ceremonies. Egyptians also considered rosemary to be sacred, using it to prepare the dead for mummification. Traces of the herb have been discovered in the tombs of the Egyptian First Dynasty. It was also used in the Middle Ages to ward off evil spirits and protect against the plague. It has been said that in 1235, Queen Elizabeth of Hungary was cured of her paralysis after a hermit soaked a pound of rosemary in a gallon of wine for several days, then rubbed it on her limbs. The combination of rosemary and wine thus became known in Europe as the Queen of Hungary's water. So what are the claimed benefits of rosemary? Well, rosemary oil is considered to be one of the most versatile oils used in alternative medicine. It has been described as containing a various number of therapeutic healing properties, uh, such as antimicrobial, anti-cancer, antifungal, anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. Due to these properties, practitioners use it to treat problems involving the central nervous system, cardiovascular system, reproductive, respiratory, respiratory, digestive uh, systems, memory and brain function, and even liver problems. It is also used in many topical lotions and ointments for the treatment of ailments such as arthritis, muscular pain, wounds, and stimulation of hair follicles for hair growth. Uh, David, David Davis's aromatherapy and A to Z covers the following uses and many more. Now, what type of hair loss is rosemary, rosemary oil supposed to be able to treat? Now, rosemary oil is said to treat hair loss associated with alopecia areata, androgenetic alopecia, and other types of hair loss associated with scalp conditions. So first, looking at alopecia areata, AA is an autoimmune disorder, also referred to as spot baldness, where the immune system mistakenly attacks hair follicles, causing the hair to fall out in patches. Doctors do not know what causes AA, and it is not curable. Most people with AA will regrow their hair after a few months. Topical application of rosemary oil is said to treat AA by stimulating the hair follicles to support hair regrowth. When it comes to androgenetic alopecia, uh, AGA is a genetic condition also referred to as male pattern baldness, though it can affect both men and women. It is estimated to affect over 50 million adults in the US and it generally, generally begins with hair loss at the temples, continues on around the crown and eventually leads to total baldness. Androgenetic alopecia is caused by a genetic predisposition. The main androgen believed to be associated with it is dihydrotestosterone. It is believed that when DHT levels increase in hair follicles, the hair growth cycle is shortened and new hair growth is delayed. Over time, the hair follicles completely stop growing new hair. The pharmaceutical treatment options for androgenetic alopecia is minoxidil and finasteride. Minoxidil, known commercially as Rogaine, is a topical treatment that stimulates the hair follicles and it has been shown to be moderately effective after four to six months of use. 
Uh, finasteride, marketed as Propecia and Prosco, is a pill that works by binding the enzyme 5 alpha reductase that would otherwise convert free testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. Topical application of rosemary oil is said to treat androgenetic alopecia by stimulating the hair follicles very much like minoxidil and by inhibiting conversion of free testosterone to dihydrotestosterone just like finasteride. When it comes to other hair loss problems, now hair loss can also be caused by clogged hair follicles, dead skin buildup and some scalp conditions that prevent hair regrowth. All of these types of hair loss are considered to be curable and treatable. Rosemary oil is known to have natural antifungal and antibacterial properties that help in maintaining a clean, healthy and strong hair follicles. As such, rosemary oil could have a direct benefit in treating these types of hair loss. So is there evidence to support these claims? The chemical constituents of rosemary oil include, a, include bitter principle, resin, tannic acid, volatile oils and flavonoids. The volatile oils consist of borneol, borneol acetate, camphene, cineol, pinene, and camphor. All of these phytochemicals have scientifically proven health benefits. Scientific studies have also demonstrated that as a result of the presence of these phytochemicals in the rosemary plant, rosemary oil possesses anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, anti-tumor, anti-ulcer, immune stimulant, and enzyme induction effects in vitro and in animals. There have also been scientific studies that prove that the aroma of rosemary oil, just the following in humans, treats anxiety by reducing cortisol levels, increases cognitive performance, improves mood, and helps enhance cognitive function in Alzheimer's patients. Note that the studies mentioned above consisted of essential oil blends, which did include rosemary oil. It wasn't the only oil there. The most relevant research related to rosemary oil as a hair loss treatment involves two key studies one in the UK in 1998 and the second in Japan in 2012. Now let's first review the 1998 study. In 1998, researchers at the Department of Dermatology Aberdeen in the United Kingdom conducted a randomized double-blind controlled study lasting seven months to investigate the efficacy of topical application of essential oils as a treatment for alopecia areata. The essential oils used in the trials were thyme, rosemary, lavender and cedarwood blended in a base of jojoba and great seed carrier oil. For the study, 84 subjects diagnosed with alopecia areata were randomized into two groups. The treatment group received daily scalp massages with the essential oil blend. The placebo group received massages using only the carrier oils. At the end of the trial, 44% of the subjects in the treatment group showed improvement, as compared to 15% in the placebo group. As a result, the researchers concluded that the essential blend used in the study was a safe and effective treatment for alopecia areata. Considering the blend was composed of various essential oils, it is difficult to say what percentage of results can be contributed to each. However, it is likely that rosemary did play a role in the results due to its many chemical components mentioned previously. Now in 2015, researchers investigated whether rosemary oil could be just as effective as minoxidil in the treatment of androgenetic alopecia. To do so, they compared the oil to 2% minoxidil as used on study participants for a period of 6 months. Patients with androgenetic alopecia were divided equally into two groups. We got the rosemary oil treatment, the minoxidil 2% treatment. They visited the research facility at the beginning of the study and every 3 months afterwards for a period of 6 months. The results were monitored using microphotographic assessment at baseline, 3 months and 6 months. At the three month mark, there was no significant hair growth recorded in either group, however, both groups saw significant improvement at the six month mark. There was no significant difference between these hair count amounts, which shows that rosemary oil and minoxidil 2% were equally effective in treating androgenetic alopecia. As for side effects, the 2% minoxidil group did experience a slightly increased risk. The main complaint was scalp itching and incidences of other scalp conditions such as dandruff and greasy hair. So what does this mean for sufferers of androgenetic alopecia? Well, it could mean that rosemary oil compares to minoxidil 2% in terms of results. It also has less side effects, which may make it a more suitable treatment option for many people. Then we've got a 2017 study done in Brazil. Well, if you're interested in more recent scientific evidence, researchers from Brazil analyzed the biological activities of uh, rosemary and more specifically, they studied the effects it had on various microorganisms, including bacteria and fungi. The study was split into four major components, and they aimed to determine rosemary oil's antimicrobial effects, 
cytotoxicity, anti-inflammatory capacity, and genotoxicity. Essentially, the researchers wanted to understand how rosemary oil interacts with a variety of organisms and the larger role it can play in human health. First, looking at the antimicrobial effects. In the first part, researchers introduced rosemary to various mono- and polymicrobial biofilms to test its inhibitory effects. The extract had growth inhibition effects on all the tested cultures and even eliminated C and uh, the two things that you can see on the screen now. Then it's cytotoxicity. In the second part of the study, researchers wanted to determine the toxicity of rosemary extract on various living cells, in particular carcinoma cells. When exposed to rosemary extract, the various cells were shown to decrease in viability. In some cases, it even dropped below 15%. What exactly does this mean? Well, viability is the ability to work successfully or otherwise thrive within a host. When viability decreases, the cell is less likely to be able to function as it should. Now, in terms of cancer cells, this means rosemary extract may be beneficial in decreasing their effectiveness. This isn't to say that rosemary extract can fight cancer single-handedly in living organisms, but it does show a, naturally abil a natural ability to target them. Next, looking at the anti-inflammatory capacity. Cytokines are proteins within the body that have pro-inflammatory effects. In other words, they lead to inflammation and pain when present within the different body systems. With this in mind, researchers studied the effects of rosemary extract on the cytokines that are produced from the lipopolysaccharides, derived from E. coli. As noted by researchers, and shown on the graph to the right, the production of two specific cytokines, IL-1B and TNF-A, was lower in the treatment group than in the control. This shows that rosemary extract does have on the natural synthesis of cytokines and can therefore inhibit at least one source of inflammation. Then finally, looking at genotoxicity. Finally, the researchers considered the effect that, the, that rosemary extract could have on DNA, and this is known as genotoxicity, and it's a measure of the extract's ability to damage a cell's integrity and increase the risk of mutations. To do so, researchers used a micronucleus assay, which tracks the presence of micronuclei in a cell. These appear when the nucleus of a cell becomes damaged. The assay was performed with four different cell types um, and the different concentrations had various effects. But the end result was that overall researchers determined that rosemary extract did not damage the nuclei and therefore was not genotoxic. Even further, rosemary extract seemed to have a protective effect on the cells. Now, all that's well and good, but what does this mean for hair loss? Now, while this particular study didn't focus on rosemary effects on hair growth, it does shed light on some of the oil's benefits. For most, rosemary extract was shown to have both antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory properties. This is beneficial for many types of hair loss, but especially alopecia areata and those related to scalp conditions such as dandruff and seborrheic dermatitis. The study also shows that rosemary extract can target cancer cells as well as protect cellular nuclei, uh, though further studies must be done to understand its impact on other cell structures. Now, what are the side effects of rosemary oil? According to the University of Michigan Health System, there are no well-known supplement or food interactions with this supplement. However, it is always possible that unknown interactions exist. If you take medication, always discuss the potential risks and benefits of adding a new supplement with your doctor or pharmacist. The drug-nutrient interaction tables may not include every possible interaction. Taking medicines with meals on an empty stomach or with alcohol may influence their effects. For details, refer to the manufacturer's package information as these are not covered in this table. If you take medications, always discuss the potential risks and benefits of adding a supplement with your doctor or pharmacist. So now let's have a look at how rosemary oil should be used. For treating hair loss, rosemary oil should be blended with carrier oils and massaged into the scalp daily. It can also be added to shampoos and conditioners for maintaining general hair and scalp health. So adding it to shampoos and conditioners. With so many shampoos on the market that claim to give you healthy hair, it can be difficult to find the right one. However, the majority of shampoo contains harmful chemicals such as sodium lauryl sulfate and sodium lauryl sulfate. And while these ingredients may preserve the shampoo, they can also damage your hair. So what are your options? You can search out all natural shampoos which tend to contain essential oils, or you can create your own. Here's one recipe that we recommend at HairGuard. 
Get one cup of apple cider vinegar, one cup of water, 10 drops of rosemary oil, quarter of a cup of jojoba oil, and 10 drops of peppermint essential oil. Simply combine all the ingredients together and mix it well. Lather it onto wet hair, massage it into the hair and scalp, and for best results, let it sit on your scalp for about three minutes. Then rinse it with lukewarm or even cold water. Now the benefits of this is that the apple cider vinegar gently cleanses the scalp by removing excess sebum buildup. The rosemary and peppermint essential oils also cleanse the scalp as well as soothe any irritation and increase blood flow to the area. Finally, the jojoba both moisturizes and hydrates the scalp and hair strands. This prevents hair breakage and increases hair strength. Also, you could apply rosemary oil directly to your scalp. Now, if you want to receive the most benefit from rosemary oil, we recommend applying it directly to your scalp. This can be done at night and even left on and rinsed off with lukewarm water in the morning. So first, let's talk about dilution. Essential oils, including rosemary, are concentrated substances that need to be diluted before applying it to the skin. Why? Well, their high concentration levels can cause skin irritation and even chemical burns. So how can you dilute rosemary oil properly? Well, with carrier oils. Carrier oils are the oils you most commonly think of, such as olive and coconut. They act as a delivery system for the essential oils, and they also lessen their concentrations so as to prevent injury. We recommend adding 5 milliliters of carrier oil for each drop of essential oil. Now that you're ready to apply rosemary oil to your scalp, here's the best way to do so. Pull the mixture of your chosen carrier and rosemary oil into your palm and massage between your hands. Apply a thin layer on the scalp and pay special attention to irritated and or thinning areas. To increase both the delivery and effects of the oil, you can also combine this technique with scalp massage. Firstly, apply the oil to your scalp as described, then place your fingers on either side of your head, and then uh, move it in a circular motion. Applying varying levels of pressure and continuous circular motions across the entirety of your scalp is a great natural way to increase blood flow to the scalp and it also can reduce stress. So guys, quite a long one, uh, but we wanted to share that view on rosemary oil. There's quite a lot of you know, in-depth science research that has gone into it. I'm gonna link all the research for you in the description. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.